This is episode number 10 in my Brian Koberger Moscow, Idaho investigation series. And in this video, we're going to talk about DoorDash. I fully believe in my heart of hearts, Brian Koberger is the DoorDash driver, and we're going to talk all about it. Make sure you follow me on Facebook. Shout out to my long-term Patreons that have been supporting me for a long time. And shout out to my brand new Patreons that have just recently signed up. I'll leave a link down below. Thank you so much. And shout out to Canada too. Sorry, not sorry. Let's jump right into this video and see what I have to say for myself this time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name is Drip Drop, and I'll be your host as always. In this super special, ultra exclusive video right here on Crime Circus, we're going to dive right in and start it with a boom. First, I'm going to give you a very brief legal disclaimer. Every single thing mentioned in this video is presumed guessing and non-factual. Anybody mentioned is presumed innocent. And any companies mentioned most likely had nothing to do with what happened in Moscow, Idaho. This is a guessing show, folks. And I appreciate you watching. Some of you are going to read between the lines, and I appreciate you for that. Now let's proceed with the show, and proceed with the boom. There's a handful of people out there that believe the DoorDash driver has been cleared. I've spent the last two days researching this to make sure I don't make a fool of myself in this video. The DoorDash driver has not been cleared, and I'll prove it. The last thing I would ever want to do is make a fool of myself on YouTube. So I've done a lot of research, a lot of reading, a lot of digging up documents, and a lot of thinking. And now I'm going to share with you my findings. There's a lot of information to cover, and it's all important. So if you're watching this right now, don't skip a single second and make sure you make it to the end of this video because it's action packed with a lot of information and I won't waste your time so this video won't be too long. First and foremost, let's read the arrest affidavit and see what it has to say for itself about the DoorDash driver. This is what it says. Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk both made statements during interviews that indicated the occupants of the King Road residence were at home by 2 a.m. and asleep or at least in their rooms by approximately 4 a.m. This is with the exception of Kernadel who received a DoorDash order at the residence at approximately 4 a.m. Law enforcement identified the DoorDash delivery driver who reported this information. Did you hear what I just said, ladies and gentlemen? I simply read what was in the arrest affidavit. But did you read between the lines and catch what it actually said? I'm going to read the important part one more time. Law enforcement identified the DoorDash delivery driver who reported this information. Who reported this information. Some of you crime junkies out there in the true crime universe may or may not be familiar with Richard Allen from Delphi, Indiana. He's accused of making two young women pass away in a horrible way. He was arrested five years after the crime, and it turns out he self-snitched on himself immediately after the crime. He came in contact with an officer immediately after the crime and said that he was on the bridge that day, and it turns out he was wearing the exact same clothes as the bridge guy. Nobody was looking for Richard Allen, but he went to the police himself and self-reported that he was on the bridge that fateful day that those two girls passed away. This is actually a super common thing that a lot of criminals do. They will place themselves at the scene, either because fear of cameras or eyewitnesses that will place them at the scene, and instead of the police coming looking for them later, they'll just go to the police immediately, thinking that it will make them look more innocent. But the police aren't that dumb. It's in the detective's book. Criminals return to the scene of the crime, and criminals will self-snitch, and criminals will also sometimes be the first ones to report the crimes to the police. Criminals often like being on the inside of the investigation process, so they implement themselves into the investigation. So the only way that the police even knew that there was a DoorDash delivery, because the DoorDash delivery guy told the police. Anyways, I think you catch my drift and some of your jaws may have dropped by now. This is not a comedy show. This is serious information in this episode right here. I really do believe Brian Koberger is the DoorDash driver, and we're going to talk about some more information regarding this. Let's see what else I have. A handful of people out there have confusingly thought that the DoorDash driver was cleared. They say this is public information, and we've all known this already. Well, let's check out the official Moscow, Idaho website and see what it has to say for itself. 
Right here on the official Moscow, Idaho website, they've got this entire page dedicated to the horrible crimes that happened on King Road on November 13th. And they have a special section, who is not believed to be involved. When we click it, I'm going to run down this list very quickly about who's not believed to be involved. The two surviving roommates, that would be Dylan and Bethany. The male in the Grove Truck Surveillance video. That's been rumored since day one that that was Jack Showalter. However, there's a lot of males in the Grove Truck video. Private party driver who took Kaylee and Madison home on November 13th. That was rumored since day one that that was an Uber driver, but then it changed to apparently it was just a good citizen that just helped out sorority girls and fraternity boys. Any individual at the residence when 911 was called. The individual on the lease who moved out of the residence before the school year started and was not present at the time of the incident. Another girl was on the lease at that home, but she moved out previously in the year. The male or his friend who was thought to be a possible stalker and followed Kaylee into the parking lot of a local business in October of 2021. Or the female associate professor and chair of the history department at the University of Idaho suing a TikTok user for defamation. Scroll down a little and you can see that the list ends right there. For those of you that don't know, a TikTok user got sued because she was coming up with a bunch of theories on this case, and she stated them as fact. But my wonderful viewers know this is never factual here at Crime Circus, it's a guessing show. And that's the list on the official Moscow, Idaho website. Who didn't you see on that list? You didn't see a DoorDash driver. You didn't see a food delivery driver. You saw nothing of the sort. I'm going to put that list on the screen one more time very briefly and you're welcome to pause this video and read through it yourself. And you can even go to the Moscow, Idaho website and you can check it out. The DoorDash driver has not been cleared. And that's official information, ladies and gentlemen. So please share this video. I know some of you out there believe in your heart of hearts that Brian Koberger is innocent. And he may be, but he might not be either. We just don't know yet. However, what we do know, allegedly, Brian Koberger is the DoorDash delivery driver. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Leave a comment under this video. Let me know what you think. Some of you may still not believe it, and that's fine, because we're all entitled to beliefs, and this is my belief. And I'm not always right, but I just try to go where the evidence leads me. Also in the arrest affidavit for Brian Koberger, a review of footage from multiple videos obtained from the King Road neighborhood showed multiple sightings of suspect vehicle 1 starting at 3.29 a.m. and ending at 4.20 a.m. These sightings show suspect vehicle 1 makes an initial three passes by 1122 King Road residence and then leave via Walenta Drive. So Brian Koberger was in the area of the King Road residence between 3.29 in 4.20 a.m. The DoorDash driver self-reported he made a delivery at approximately 4 a.m. The word approximately is important because it keeps getting used inside this arrest affidavit. Everything is approximate. If the DoorDash driver had said exactly what time he made the delivery, it would have looked a little extra suspicious because he would have been a little too detailed. So he most likely said that I made a delivery at approximately 4 a.m. because he knew that he would have been caught on camera in that neighborhood. So we know for certain on the morning of November 13th, Brian Koberger was in the area at the exact same time that the DoorDash driver was in the area. At approximately the exact same time that the crime ended up taking place. This really does remind me of Richard Allen from Delphi. He put himself at the scene at the exact same time that the crime happened. A video came out and it turns out the guy in the video looks exactly like Richard Allen. A 5 foot 4 inch troll that stole two innocent souls and destroyed so many lives. Let's proceed with these documents that I'm holding in my hand right here. I've got a lot of information on this case. The case from Moscow, Idaho. Brian Koberger. Let's check it out. Dylan Mortensen stated she was awoken at approximately 4 a.m. by what she stated sounded like Gonclaves playing with her dog in one of the upstairs bedrooms, which were located on the third floor. A short time later, Dylan Mortensen said she heard who she thought was Gonclaves say something to the effect of there's someone here. A download of Carnado's phone showed this could have been Carnado as her cellular phone indicated she was likely awake and using the TikTok app at approximately 4.12 a.m. She was on TikTok. I do wonder if she was watching the Crime Circus TikTok. Probably not, but moving on. The suspect vehicle can be seen entering the area a fourth time at approximately 4.04 a.m. 
It can be seen driving eastbound on King Road, stopping and turning around in front of 500 Queen Road 52, and then driving back westbound on King Road. When suspect vehicle 1 is in front of the King Road residence, it appeared to unsuccessfully attempt to park or turn around in the road. The vehicle then continued to the intersection of Queen Road and King Road where it can be seen completing a three-point turn and then driving eastbound again down Queen Road. Suspect Vehicle 1 is next seen departing the area of the King Road residence at approximately 4.20 a.m. at a high rate of speed. So there's a few different things to discuss with what I just read and what you just heard. They used the word approximately. Let's check out what the word approximately means exactly. According to the dictionary, approximately, used to show that something is almost, but not completely accurate or exact, roughly. So when you read what they're actually saying here, the DoorDash driver was approximately there at 4 a.m. Approximately 4 a.m. could mean 5 or 10 minutes before, or 5 to 10 minutes after. They know for sure that Brian Koberger's car was caught on camera at 4.04 a.m. And I do believe that's why Brian felt the need to tell the police that he was there at approximately 4 a.m. because he knew he had been caught on camera. He had circled that neighborhood. He knew which houses had cameras. If you think about it, the odds of a random DoorDash delivery driver showing up at 4 a.m. and then Brian showing up at 4.04 a.m. You have better odds of being struck by lightning three days in a row. Or maybe even better odds of winning the billion dollar lotto. Keep in mind, Brian Koberger was already in the area at 3.29 a.m., approximately. DoorDash was approximately 4 a.m. And when they say approximately, that could have been any time around 4. They know for sure they saw Brian's car at 4.04 a.m. Do you think there was a little bit of traffic going on at approximately 4 a.m.? And Brian drove by the DoorDash driver? Or is it much more likely Brian Koberger was basically the only car on the road at that hour on that street? I think I'm approximately exactly correct. So if Brian had been driving around that neighborhood for approximately 30 minutes, checking it out, scoping out the area, making sure it was safe to do what he wanted to do, and then he drives by the camera at approximately 4.04 a.m., has some issues parking, and then successfully parks, one could assume that Brian would end up making contact with the residents at approximately 4.08 to 4.10 a.m. And with Dylan being woken up out of his sleep, Dylan glances at her phone. The first number she sees is a 4, followed by a 0, then maybe a 7, 8, or 9. So when she tells police she was woken up at approximately 4 a.m. Because when you tell a story to somebody, you don't say exact specific numbers if you're not sure and you're just woken up out of a sleep. If you wake up and you see it was 4.08, you would most likely tell somebody I was woken up at around 4 a.m. I heard noises at around 4 o'clock. If you were telling somebody in your life a version of events that happened, and you came out of the gate with information like it happened at exactly 4.07 a.m., they'd probably look at you a little weird like, how the heck did you know the exact minute that something happened? Plus, she's 18 years old, so she's not keeping exact track of exact minutes on her cell phone. Next up in the arrest affidavit, it says... The combination of Dylan Mortensen's statements to law enforcement, reviews of forensic downloads of records from Bethany Funk and Dylan Mortensen's phone, and video of a suspect video as described below, leads investigators to believe the homicides occurred between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. I'll read that last part again. Leads investigators to believe the homicides occurred between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all right there in the arrest affidavit, and we've all overlooked it for so many months. I know some of you out there with a high IQ knew this from the very first day. It was the DoorDasher. They believe the homicides occurred between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. But Brian wasn't caught on camera until 4.04 a.m. Do you see what they're saying inside of this document, ladies and gentlemen? It's all right there, and we missed it. But we're not missing it anymore because I'm presenting it right here. This is important information and it makes the whole case make sense. We were too distracted with the multiple Jacks, hyper-focused on Kaylee's ex-boyfriend, wondering is Jack Showalter really in Africa? We were all wondering what was said to Adam. And still to this day, a lot of us are wondering. However, it's right here in the arrest affidavit. 
They believe the homicides occurred between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m., but if Brian wasn't caught on camera until 4.04 a.m., why would they say at about 4 a.m.? Why would they list 4 a.m. and not a few minutes after 4.04 a.m. when he was actually still in his vehicle? And why would they list 4.25 a.m. if his vehicle is actually seen leaving the scene at a high rate of speed at 4.20 a.m.? Certainly at the time that this arrest affidavit was written, they had checked out the camera box, the security network, and they made sure that the timestamp on that video was 100% correct. At approximately 4.17 a.m., a security camera located at 1112 King Road, a residence immediately to the northwest of 1122 King Road, picked up distorted audio of what sounded like voices or a whimper, followed by a loud thud. A dog can be heard barking numerous times starting at 4.17 a.m. The security camera is less than 50 feet from the west wall of Kernadel's room. A quick reminder on the layout of the house. Check this out on the screen right here. Here was Anna's room. She was in there with her boyfriend, Ethan. He's another victim in this case. We still have more information to talk about on DoorDash, but this is an open challenge for any doubters that are watching this. If you don't think that Brian Koberger is the DoorDash driver, leave me a comment down below with what kind of car the DoorDash driver was driving and what his or her first name is. I'll let you know right now you can't win that challenge because Brian Koberger is allegedly the DoorDash driver. And there's a gag order on this case right now. That's why you don't know who the DoorDash driver is. People have been focused on Enon, multiple various creepy neighbors, Dylan Mortensen, Bethany Funk, so on and so forth. But who do you think the DoorDash driver is? If he was there at the exact same time frame that the police say the homicides occurred, you put two and two together, it equals four, and it makes it so crystal clear. Brian is the DoorDash driver. Because if he's not, that means somebody else was there at the exact same time that these homicides occurred. So the simplest answer is he is the DoorDash driver. You may be wondering why we don't know this for sure. You may be wondering why this isn't public knowledge until this video right here. The fact is DoorDash is a billion dollar company. And if it was revealed that a DoorDasher committed the worst quadruple homicide in recent times, that could potentially bankrupt their business and put them out of business forever. I believe it's been a cover-up to save the reputation of the company. And because of the gag order, nobody can even really talk about it that actually knows about it for sure. Ask yourselves, why is there a gag order in this case? The families don't want there to be a gag order. Court proceedings are supposed to be public records. If they have the right guy in custody, there really should be no secrets. It shouldn't be such a big deal to find out who was the DoorDash driver. Well, I know, it was Brian Koberger. And now we all know. How many cases have you heard about that actually have a gag order? It's really not that common. It's also been reported that Brian Koberger's cell phone pinged in the Moscow area approximately 12 times between August and November. And one time they say it pinged there, but he wasn't even there. And that's just how cell phone pings work. You can be in a different location, and if one tower is overloaded, your cell phone will ping off a different tower even if you're not in the location. So it's not exactly reliable science, and many defense attorneys have hired experts that have shredded that information in court. So not so reliable one way or the other. If he was stalking these girls from Mad Greek, you would think he'd probably have 40, 50, or even 60 cell phone pings in the area if he was that obsessed. If it only pinged 12 times, he may or may not have been stalking them, but that doesn't seem too obsessive. He could have just been making DoorDash deliveries to Moscow. So obviously from the very first day, the police were aware of the white Hyundai from the DoorDash driver. However, when they told us, the public, about the white Hyundai Elantra, they told us the wrong year intentionally because they didn't want to spook Brian Koberger, the DoorDasher. So they told us to look out for a 2011 to 2013, come to find out Brian Koberger was actually in a 2015. You've got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, the police, the FBI, the world's greatest minds were working on this case behind the scenes. They had an entire team of specialized criminal behavioral psychological profiling agents. All kinds of important people looking into this. If they had revealed that they were looking for the exact car that Brian Koberger was in, 
They knew that that would have spooked him. At that point, he would have known that he was a prime suspect and he would have destroyed evidence and he would have had a chance to make the case against him harder to convict him. This was an advanced cat and mouse game. And we, the public, weren't privy to what was going on behind the scenes in those agents' offices. The DoorDash driver came forward, which was Brian Koberger. They knew at that point what kind of vehicle he drove. A couple weeks later, they tell us to look for a similar vehicle. But not the exact vehicle, but they already knew it was the exact vehicle. And then they reveal the cover story within the arrest affidavit that a patrol officer at Washington State University just randomly came across Brian Koberger's car. And that's how he got on their radar. But that's just not 100% accurate because he was already on the radar. They already knew about him. I've read the arrest affidavit 1,122 times. I've read between the lines. I've looked up definitions of words just to make sure I truly understand their meanings. And now we've all learned officially what approximately means. And some of you already knew that, but I just wanted to make sure. And for those of you that didn't know, now you know. I'm always researching true crime behind the scenes. But right now, I am focused on Moscow, Idaho and Brian Koberger, and the four innocent people that lost their souls. Maddie, Kaylee, Ethan, and Zana. R.I.P. That's why I do this show, for the victims. Some of you out there might be wondering, how did this even happen in the first place? How did he come upon these victims? I have a theory, and I'm going to share it. Zana and Maddie worked at a restaurant called Mad Greek. This is what it looks like. You can see in this image right here, they're on DoorDash. That's a very popular restaurant in that small town and certainly Brian Koberger would have made his way to that restaurant multiple times. Clearly at some point, Brian Koberger had come in contact with Maddie and Zana and he became infatuated, obsessed. He just had to have what he couldn't have. He wanted them, he needed them, he couldn't have them. He was crushed, rejected. He had made it 28 years on planet Earth in Pennsylvania and allegedly never harmed anybody, but I'll be covering that in an upcoming episode. I will investigate other crimes in Pennsylvania and we will see if he harmed anyone. We do know when he was in the Pullman, Washington slash Moscow, Idaho area, he allegedly committed one of the worst brutal homicides with a knife in modern times within three to four months of moving there. So something about these girls set him off. Was Brian Koberger an incel? Yes. Yes, he was. Did he have the Elliot Roger manifesto in his bedroom with page 118 underlined? Most likely not because that was not a real book. That was just a PDF and that was on the internet. It sounds like investigators confiscated an actual book. Did he print it off on a printer? Maybe, but then it's not really a book. That's just printed papers. Anyways, that's got nothing to do with this episode right here. That's my previous episode, The Search Warrant. Thank you so much for watching this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be back again soon, as I always am. Maybe episode 11, maybe an interrogation. We'll see what's coming next. I'm going to be talking about other people in this case, just like I promised, that's coming. But for now, this was the DoorDash episode, just like I promised. A very quick reminder, we're almost at a thousand followers on Facebook. I'm brand new to Facebook. But once we hit a thousand followers, I'm going to start doing live chat premieres on Facebook. Also, I've been getting quite a few Patreon signups lately. Thank you so much. Your support goes a long way with this show. I'll leave the link to my Patreon down below, or you can become a YouTube member. Either way, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Most of you already know by now, there's a second Crime Circus YouTube channel. That's official, and that's me, the Crime Circus Cult. I'll leave a link down below for that as well. You can never have too much Crime Circus, right? Just like you can never have too much Jensen Ackles right? Just a reminder, these are the days of our lives. Also a reminder, Brian Koberger is the DoorDash driver. I just proved it. And until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.